Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Cone Doctor here. Welcome back to the Vector Automotive Challenge. It is 1967. We have just recently rolled off our brand new car, the Vector Combat. The Combat did very well amongst the press, getting very high marks and reviews, and gathered a lot of interest amongst the the automotive, you know, publishers and and the press and things like that. However, the buyers, well, they didn't really show up for it. It's unfortunately, as we mentioned, already quite the crowded market, and other offerings, mostly the, the, the biggest competitors we have run into are from General Motors. Uh, Pontiac has their GTO, and its subsequent, you know, submodels, and Chevrolet has the, the Chevelle, which does have quite a few similarities to our vehicle so it's struggling to sell which is a problem because we did market the car at a at a bargain price making as little money as possible off of it and the the added in lack of sales of that vehicle have have put us in a little bit of a tough situation our other cars the sedan the quark and the intrigue the smaller coupe have done pretty well However, we designed the Intrigue in 1960 and started selling it in 1962. That car is starting to become a little bit dated in our lineup. Sales are starting to taper off. So it is time to do our first model refresh as a company. And we're going to start with the Intrigue. So what we are going to do is rather than start with the existing Intrigue and kind of reshape that car into something new, we are actually going to start from scratch with our new resources, knowledge, and experience. I think the better way to go here is to start from scratch and reimagine the intrigue from the beginning. That doesn't mean I want to make a lot of changes. I really liked the format of the intrigue. I think it was a, a really strong car. But just knowing what we know now as a company really feels as though we could do even better. So we will be designing this vehicle in 1967 to be sold probably in 1968, but very early. We want to get this car to the showrooms soon. So there's going to be no grace period here. We we don't have the opportunity to make this a concept car before it's a production car. The last version of the entry used this body, which was great for the time, but I'm starting to feel as though it's lines and curvy front end and overall kind of rounded shape are are not fitting in with the the look of the current vehicles. That car had a 97 inch wheelbase and I was pretty happy with that kind of range. It's it's basically a subcompact car. It's the smallest car that a buyer would be interested in buying. So I'm going to choose this newer body style which has a 95.28 wheelbase so it is a little bit smaller and that is going to cause us to do some things differently with it. Now, as this body sits, I pretty much hate it. However, I feel as though there's some good morphing available in this body, so let's see what I can do to maybe make it look a little bit more in line with the Vector lineup. Okay, I think that's a pretty good start, and it really does carry over a lot of the lines of the early Intrigue, so I like this a lot. Uh, it, it looks like, you know, a generational change and not just a completely new car. Let's see about maybe doing some chassis details here. I'm going to stick with the monocoque chassis. I don't like ladder frames. It's just, it's an old technology. It's the easy way to go, and we are a new company. We're all about trying new things and and making changes to the whole automotive industry, so we're going to stick with monocoque chassis for basically all of our cars. I do want to stick to a rear wheel drive layout. Front wheel drive is an option, I just don't think it's a great option for this particular car. That I don't want to be just our economy car, I want this to also kind of spread into our pony car market and have a lot of variability, so I don't want to restrict myself to a front wheel drive layout, just not the time for that. In the front, I feel as though the McPherson strut setup is a good fit for this car, considering its size and 
the wide range of things we want to do with it. And the rear single axle coil for now, it's still a good option. Solid axle is a little bit on the simple side, a little bit on the old school side, but it's still, I think, a good, a good fit for our car. Panel material will be steel. We're not going to do any crazy fiberglass stuff because we don't have time to, like I said, make a concept of this car. It's got to be ready for production now. The game is currently telling me that it can only fit 125, so I'm hoping that's a bug. I think, yeah, I think as we change the actual wheels on the car, that will change as well. Pretty sure, pretty sure this is a year thing. If the, if the year was like 72 or something, uh, these wheels would be fine and we'd be wide enough, but uh, in 67, not the case. So we'll address that as we get there. But before we get too far, this baby needs some character. Gotta give it some style, so let me find the right fixtures for this car. Alrighty, so there we go. There is our base model sport. Keeping things simple, trying to keep themes from the past generation, but yet give it a little bit more of a modern flair. One of the things I'm really trying to exercise with my designs is making it so that the, the cars have a full range. Not making the base models look too fancy and really making the different, you know, different trim packages of the same model distinct and have unique features because that's something that real cars do have. So I'm trying to hold back, not use too many fixtures. Even if it's not the most exciting design, it makes the other cars, the ones that we can charge more money for, it makes those more exciting. So that is why the body might look a little simple in this regular sport trim. Now with this new chassis, we have a new challenge. The engine bay is a little bit smaller and the previous inline six I was using doesn't quite fit. Uh, it, really, it really dominates the engine bay and is just barely, barely squeezing into there and I don't think it's a good fit for this chassis at all. That was again the first thing we designed as a company and it's probably time to introduce a new engine to the entire lineup's family. Instead of doing what everyone else is doing and building inline sixes for their base model cars, we're gonna challenge ourselves to try and build an inline four to have similar performance to our previous inline six, but hopefully at a significant weight savings. And this shows you just how tight this engine bay is. Even the inline four at two liters is just barely squeezing in there. And we can probably only take it up to now we could take it up to a two and a half liter. That's probably larger than we need to be though. Let's see, let's try and do that kind of squared up. I think that would be good. 91.9 by 91.9 sounds like a good starting point. I think another one of the, the real principles of our company is we are not a push rod company. It's not something we're interested in, so we're not gonna build any engines that feature it uh, at least not at, at the present time. It's just not in not in our MO. In order to try and get the performance out of this four cylinder that we were previously getting out of our six cylinder, we're gonna try a single overhead cam with three valves per cylinder to really get the air into those cylinders and and hopefully get the performance out of them too. I don't feel the need to do anything crazy with the bottom end materials. This should be just fine using regular cast parts. To start out, I think I'm gonna try a single two barrel carburetor on there. But there's a standard intake, and we're gonna try and run this on regular leaded, because this is the every man's car. This is this is the car that everybody can afford and everybody can afford to drive. So, not going to go ahead and put it up to super leaded, and we'll see if it can turn 6,000 RPM. I'm not really sure what this inline four will do just yet. We'll just have to test it and find out. And honestly, I would like it to make at least close to 150 horsepower. So. That should be good for now. Uh, this this engine shouldn't be terribly loud, so we don't need but maybe one reverse slow muffler on it. I uh, will tune that as well. Okay, so we're running into some compression issues, it looks like. So let us lower that down. Nine, okay, and maybe up the cam profile. And we will lower the ignition timing. Okay, we're getting closer all the way down to 8.3 to one in order to get it to stop knocking and it's definitely not needing to rev quite that high. Uh, so we can reduce that RPM limit. 5,600 seems like a decent number. 
really like to get that performance index above 100. So that's that's what I'm going to focus on. Alrighty, so here we go. This is our 2.4 liter inline four, 12 valve setup. So it is overhead cam, three valves per cylinder, and with 145 horsepower, 153 foot pounds of torque. It is a good competitive engine, really competitive with our previous inline six, and has a 100.2 performance index, which is what I wanted. I wanted to get it over that over 100. And, wow, I kind of sounded like an auctioneer there, didn't I? And the weight is 390. Uh, I'm curious what that is in comparison to the previous inline six. Please be saved. Please be saved. Cross your fingers. Hope it's saved. Interestingly, that weight of 390 pounds is slightly heavier than the base model inline six that we had previously by about 20 pounds, probably due to the fact we are running with the three valve setup. Uh, there's a little bit more weight in the top end. However, it has a pretty much identical performance index and economy running on the lower octane fuel. That's the key. So that makes this engine much more affordable for the daily buyer, the regular consumer, because uh, it's much cheaper to run, but you're getting the same performance out of it. So I think, I think this will be a successful engine for us. Let's put it in the car and put a trim package around it to see what it'll do. Alrighty, I've already gone through the trim once and basically gave it some default settings, if you will. But now we'll go through it and actually refine the whole trim of the vehicle. So we're going to with the manual and the base with a four-speed. Obviously needs more top speed. Much more top speed. Much more. There we go. That should be good. And how is our wheel spin looking? Very bad. Uh, actually not horrifically bad, but not great. Space it out perhaps will help. Yeah, down to 12%. Actually reduces our 0 to 60 time. Or increases our 0 to 60 time. Reduces its its goodness. <laughs> uh, words. And let's see. We could get that wheel spin way, way down. But it really only hurts the 0 to 60. And helps the comfort or the drivability. That's probably more important, to be honest. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's give it more overdrive and and have the drivability be good with a with a low wheel spin. I think that's important. As expected with the wheels, we were indeed able to put smaller wheels on it and get wider tires. 175, which is okay. I would like a little bit wider tire under there for the future but 175 will be fine for the base model. Suppose I should look at the visuals. These are the regular ones, just your plain steel wheels. And since this is the regular sport one, I think I'll actually stick with those. Brakes. Front tires are outperforming the brakes. So the rear is kind of okay. The fronts need to be performing better. I have solid discs on the front. And two pistons would, yeah, two pistons would way overdo it. But we can't get any more rotor in there due to the size of the wheels. Racier pads would help, but probably reduce comfort. It is doing that. Oof, that's, that's riding a fine line there, isn't it? Because it's, it's right at the point where the tires and the brakes are performing equally, if you will. So, hmm, the actual braking time isn't terrible, and the drivability sportiness are looking good. The brake fade is, it's there, I mean, it's its not a non-issue, and more rear pad would only, only help brake fade, makes it actually harder to drive, though, so maybe we'll just not go quite as crazy with those. Yeah, I think I think I'm actually going to stick with that for now. It is it is performing very very borderline. We may come back to this. We'll see. Uh, cooling airflow, everything should be good there. I gave it just just enough, I think. Uh, an interior, I went with four seats. I'm curious what five seats does for it. Gives it a higher safety, which is weird. Uh, it's certainly more practicality and more utility, but that doesn't really help the categories that this car is fitting in which is a pony, basically. So, 
So nuts to that. Uh, it's 68. Oh, it actually does help with Pony a little bit. Okay, well, if it's helping, it's helping. We will keep it. I like the idea of having power steering on my cars. It just seems like something every car should have. And the safety, we have standard 60s on there now. Advanced will help the pony category a lot. Uh, because that is actually something that is is listed as an important factor. Uh, if you look here, safety is 12.2% of, of the pony category. So that's something that I believe is really important to it. And we've gotten that up to 78.2. That seems to be the category it's leaning towards. And I don't have any problems with a company having the reputation of, have, of making safe cars. Uh, we, we took a little heat in the past for that, which was coming from the enthusiast side, I understand. But uh, we, want, we want everybody to buy our cars, not just car enthusiasts. We want, we want people who are, are looking for good, reliable, safe transportation, too. And the suspension, I'm sure there's some improvements needed to be made here. Of course, we have to increase the front damper stiffness. And as a good friend of the channel once told me, basically, the best way to do this is to keep going up on the front damper stiffness until then, until you see the comfort start to go down. So that is where we will stop. And it looks like, to me, it could use a little front camera because it's super drivable, not very sporty at the moment. All right, so basically what I ended up doing was making it as sporty as possible that did not hurt its drivability. And I think we've... We've struck kind of a happy medium here. This is not the, even though it's called a sport, that, that just means it's the entry level model. It doesn't really mean that it's going to be our full on race car. So let's not get carried away. And let's see, do they, does this buyer care that it's bottoming out? Probably so, but let's just get it right up to the border of doing so. There we go. So we have a pony up to 79. We need to work on something to get that better. Okay, so looking at our overall stats, this car only weighs 2,200 pounds. Very, very light, and that's what I mean when I said subcompact. It is a very small light car with some decent power. The performance of it's pretty decent. 9.30 to 60 is very much so acceptable. The quarter mile is a 17. It's not something you're going to be bringing to the drag strip. Uh, as is, but uh, you know, it's it's reasonable for a daily driver. The handling is quite, quite good for the small tires, pulling more than 1G at slow speeds, and still doing okay at the higher speeds, 108 miles an hour, it still pulled 0.96. Not too shabby. I don't know that autocross is really much of a thing in 1967, but it'd probably be a pretty darn good autocross car. Markets, markets, markets. Okay. Family Sport is 76.7. That is very important. That is the main category for this car to me. Second only to Pony. However, this car seems to be, bizarrely, a little bit too expensive for Pony. Uh, our affordability is only 54% there. 54.9. Affordability on Family Sport is 72. Now, this is not making a whole lot of profit. So, let's increase our profits a little bit on it. Okay, so now we're making a little bit of money on it. And we're still doing okay in Family Sport and Pony. This is just one trim of this car, so if it only has two categories that it's doing okay in, that is in itself okay. But let's see if we can't get one of those to be even better. Okay, so one cool feature of automation in here that I have not really taken advantage of before. You see the little tacks? You can pin which one of these you want to focus on. So I'm going to focus on Pony, and we're going to focus on Family Sport. Now let's go back through here, and you'll see that those are the two that are displayed. So I'm going to do some tweaking and try and find out what I can do to increase one of these. Okay, so interestingly, one of the top things I did to really boost the interest of this car, or the uh, desirability, was basicing out the interior. So basic interior and no entertainment. And that really did a lot. It lowered the weight of the vehicle, which made a bunch of these stats jump up, which helps. Uh, but really, it seemed to lower the cost, which was the main factor in all of that. It really helped the pony category. Even though the affordability, the price range isn't perfect on pony, it is really good on family sport, which still has a pretty darn good value at 78.7. 
So the Vector Intrigue Mark II Sport is really straddling these two markets. It does obviously have some other ones in there too, but Family Sport and Pony are the two that I was most interested in selling this car to, and uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. And we've managed to do it in a way that still makes the company some money, so we're selling these cars for a decent profit, and that's really important. Alrighty, that's actually going to do it for today on the Vector Automotive Challenge. Hope you enjoyed. We are going to be changing things up just a little bit where I'm going to do multiple episodes per year. As our company gets more established, we have more to do every year, and we don't want to advance through time too quickly. We really want to enjoy this pretty cool era of the American automotive industry. So let me know down in the comments what you think we should do with the other trims for the car. Previously, we had the Traveler, we had the Rally, and the Sport. Uh, we currently have a Sport, but is there any other directions you would like to see this car go? Maybe to the pure budget side, maybe to the crazy off-road side, who knows? Just let me know what you think would be something cool to do with this, with this chassis. So thanks as always for watching, leave a like if you liked it, and I will see ya next time. More manufacturers jumping in before we can get a chance to get those buyers. Now when we took this concept car to the market analysis, it was not favorable in any particular way as far as selling this vehicle alone as it, as it stands. However, these are not necessarily the markets we are going for. These are just markets that catch eyeballs at car shows. These here, muscle...